So first off, who am I? Um, so I'm from Newham. I'm from actually East Ham. Lived here my whole life. I actually went to university um, to study costume design, which I graduated from last year. So I love research into historical dress and recreating it and creating wild costumes, looking at so many different kind of textile techniques and being really creative with that. And um, my kind of co-creator, Memonar too. Hi everyone, I'm <laughs> um, I'm a textile design student or a textile designer, also really interested in poetry and all the creative arts. Um, if you want to kind of see more of my work, please go to my website or my Instagram page. Thanks. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you can follow us on Instagram. Both of us kind of have our art and um, creative investigations online, which you can have a look at. And then Darning Noom. So we came together to create Darning Noom. And I got in contact with Memonar to probably in November, we think. Um, and we actually studied together at New Fix Sixth Form, which is how we knew each other. But we hadn't spoken to each other for quite a while. And I saw that New Heritage Month had this opportunity to um, fund projects, particularly creative projects. And I thought Memonati would just be the perfect person to do this with. So um, we kind of focused in on this idea of how women contribute to Newham and communities in general. And because the theme of Newham Heritage Month is shops, stocks and factories, we were particularly interested in exploring that idea of the factory as a kind of community hub in itself, um, particularly in Silvertown, uh, where you have Tate and Lyle. And there were communities formed around that factory. Um, they also worked that factory. And it's just really interesting how industry has affected um, our borough and how it's changed quite a lot over the years. So Meminatu's focus is um, on the kind of 1960s to 80s of how uh, factories were really a kind of way of women gaining um, power and autonomy um, as they entered the workplace more um, and looking at that history and how we also might not represent history quite correctly, um, where we miss out the stories of women, uh, particularly uh, women of colour from Southeast Asian um, and where else was it, Mamanati? Southeast Asian, um, Caribbean and African backgrounds. Um, but I was also focusing on how the workforce has kind of shifted away from the factory or kind of these traditional um, ways of labour or contribution to the society and how um, it's really opened up to what people can contribute to the society. So it was all about that idea of, of change. Um, and my focus was looking back a bit further um, from kind of 1890 to 1920s, um, and I was particularly fascinated by images from Newham Archive, where you have these kind of black and white photographs of women. Um, and they just seem so different to Newham now. And it's just a completely different kind of world. Um, and they're doing tasks that are very repetitive, uh, like cutting cardboard and bottling items, which now is just done uh, by machines. Uh, it's not something that someone necessarily does anymore. And I was just really interested in this whole world that is very different um, and how we can still relate to those women and kind of bring out those really interesting stories. So um, because I found that these stories are quite difficult to find um, evidence of or, or get their perspective, I was um, drawing a lot from these images of uh, black and white photographs of women working in factories um, and really interested in just kind of exploring these characters uh, and personalities through drawing and then bringing it into a print process called cyanotype, um, which created quite ghostly figures. Um, I also was really interested in using stitch um, and fabric crayons, which is something we explored uh, in our session yesterday to try and really focus on these women and 
create these images of them and explore that idea of these lost stories. So uh, my work kind of culminated in creating an overall um, using the cyanotype process because I was exploring that idea of the fashion of these women. Um, and even though they're working in a factory and you think of kind of uniforms, their clothing was actually very unique to them. And you could kind of get a sense of their personalities through these dresses. Um, so that's what I created. I created an overall, um, which will be um, displayed through a film along with Memonatu's final piece and uh, our work with Nuvik as we ran a competition for them. And we had one student create a kind of overall print um, that we printed. And also what we will use in that film is the work from these workshops because um, from our workshop yesterday and today, we want you to create a kind of textile square that we will sew together as a kind of community banner. So that's something to look out for on the website. And if you want to find out any more about our projects, we've done full write-ups for kind of each element of our project. And uh, you can find that on uh, newmheritagemonth.org. So please do check that out. We've also got our Instagram, Darning Newham, to find out any more about our project and us. Uh, we've got our individual um, Instagrams as well. So in terms of today's plan, we're going to be doing some sewing. And as I've said, if you haven't done sewing before, I don't want you to be worried about having not done it before. It's going to be very accessible, very therapeutic. We're just going to take our time and really enjoy yeah that kind of meditative element of stitching um so i'm going to switch around my screens because i do have the ability to show my screen as i'm stitching there we go so as you can see i've got my stuff ready so this is the um things that you were given in your workshop packs if you're working with your own equipment then it's an embroidery hoop, um, a needle, your thread, some scissors, which weren't in your workshop packs, um, but good to have, and your kind of fabric squares. So if we can get that together, if you've not got a drink, get a drink, let's just sort ourselves out. And it'd be really nice to have um, kind of a quick introduction to see people, but there are lots of people. <laughs> But I'd really like to hear from some of you. And I know some of you went to the workshop yesterday as well. So as we're sorting out, maybe we could go around and just say your name, uh, where you're based. So if you're in Newham, uh, whereabouts in Newham, um, say I'm from East Ham. And uh, what your favourite flavour is. <laughs> yesterday we had our favourite smell. And that was interesting. Lavender came out as the top one. Um, so favorite flavor. Arms length of thread to work with. And then we want to thread our needle. And it's very un-COVID friendly, but you, it's easier if you lick it. <laughs> and maybe just snipping the end to make sure it's a nice clean cut. Um, I would just do a single thread to Anna. <laughs> There's going to be variation in how this turns out. I'm also really struggling to thread my needle. It's always the case when you've got an audience. And just tie a knot at one end. So I've got my thread. I'm keeping um, the other end loose. I'm not going to 
double it up and tie it together at the end because it makes it much easier to get rid of mistakes if you've got it kind of so you can take it out the needle but you just want enough on one side so that it's not going to come out as you stitch if you're using the six stranded embroidery floss do you use all of the six strands then yeah I don't I just use the whole one you can if you want a thinner thread kind of separate them or if you're finding it difficult to thread the needle you could separate the threads and just have a few strands in but the eye should be big enough but then I struggled <laughs> And just while we're sorting that out, I'm just going to talk through what we're kind of creating this session. So, um, uh, sorry, Katie, there's a yeah. request for you to uh, show how you thread your needle. Yeah. Or so you could, it's in the chat. Sorry, I don't, I don't want to, not to throw how you thread the needle, just we can't see anything we're doing at the moment. We can only see your face. So I don't know oh, if you were oh. intending to show us your work. So if you pin my... You're on there. I can see your picture. I can see you live, but I can only see this part of you. So I can't see any can of you your Can you see work. My, my table? I've got yeah. my one... There's another case made that is my table. Yeah, I can see your table. Okay, no. um, so the way you do that, uh, Annie, is to find Katie's second screen of her hands. I, I have... No, I found the second screen. I did the, the pinning of the first one, but, but there's a third screen maybe here with just her hands. Yeah, there should be. And if you go to the top right corner of that screen, you could pin it to make that okay. the image you see. Okay, got it now. Thank you. Yeah, so I'll go through it again. So we're cutting a length of thread about the length of your arm and then on one end, you find it uh, easier if you've got the strands kind of a nice clean cut with your scissors. So you might want to just cut it again. And you're gonna thread your needle. I was also saying that it's much easier to thread the needle. You just wet the <laughs> edge of the thread, which isn't COVID friendly, but makes it easier. Um, and I just wanna get those strands through the eye of the needle, which is much more difficult when You've got an audience, as I was saying. <laughs> uh, so you're going to pull them through and you're going to have a strand coming out and then your longer strand. And on your longer strand, you're just going to tie a knot or a double knot just at the end. Yeah. Um, so once we've got that sorted, we've got our thread ready. Um, I just wanted to talk about what we're kind of creating. Um, so you've got these 20 by 20 squares. If you don't have the workshop pack, then it is just a 20 by 20 square to work in. Some embroidery thread, your needle, some scissors. And what we're going to try and create is a decorated um, square. We're going to be using this um, kind of decorative mending technique um, that you can see here. I've done it in the silhouette of um, one of the women I was looking at in my photographs, but we're just going to do a very simple shape to get the hang of it. And on this, it's just using the most basic stitch of a running stitch. And uh, we can go on to doing some um, other embroidery stitches of chain stitch and back stitch. But let's first start off with our decorative mending, which only requires running stitch. This is going to be a very relaxing um, way to do stitching. 
So if you get your fabric square, we're going to do the destructive action first. It's like when you are going to sketch and you have a blank page and it's really daunting. So we're gonna cut a hole in our fabric to then fix. Um, so you can do a shape. Um, I would keep it uh, smaller than the size of your hoop so we can just do it in our hoop. So it can just be a circle, it could be a square, it could be a little heart, whatever shape you want. You want to cut a nice clean hole so don't cut into your fabric from the end, just pinch the fabric so you can cut a hole in the middle. I've cut my hole, it's done. I've done, gone for a little heart. So everyone should cut a hole in their fabric, not massive, at least um, a size you can work in within the shape of your embroidery hoop. When you've done it, show me. <laughs> We've got a nice one from Memonar too. And Kaz, lovely. Lovely. Lovely, Ellie's got hers done. And I'm seeing Jennifer. Oh, we've got a fun shape there. Jennifer as well. We've got two Jennifers. <laughs> Both have done it. <laughs> Lovely. Nancy. Bonnie. Lovely. Amy. Ryan. Janet. So I can see most people have got to this point where they've They've done their first mark on the page. They've done their act of destruction. And we're going to fix this hole. So the idea of this whole workshop is that this is a method you could use to fix um, holes in your own garments. Um, it has been a technique used by many different cultures. So um, this idea of using just a basic running stitch to fix clothing and enforce it, you see um, in Japan with uh, Boro and Shishiko, and you also see it in um, South Asia with um, Kanta, which is actually the, an outfit I'm wearing. It's from the same process of just doing simple running stitches to support fabric. You can do it even before a hole forms. It just helps support your fabric, or you can do it like we're doing to fix a hole. So we're going to use another piece of fabric, um, your second piece that you have. And we're going to layer it behind. And we're going to get our embroidery hoop to secure them for our stitching. So if you take apart your embroidery hoop, you have your hoop here with no supporting um, mechanism. And then this one here, which is the securing mechanism. You're going to layer up your fabrics, put the hoop without a securing mechanism at the back tightening here I'm going to put it on top of each other it can already feel that it gets um, the fabric more kind of taut so we'll have it ready to start our stitching Does the fabric you put behind have to be as big as your square? Or can it just be big enough to cover the hole? It can be smaller. Um, I recommend doing it so it's big enough to be also caught by the embroidery hoop. Because you can see here it's caught as well. So it's already securing it for us. But it doesn't need to be as big. <laughs> Let 
Lovely, I can see Kaz is all ready. Lovely, Kova's got hers ready. I'm loving the amount of hearts. <laughs> oh, Nelly, love it. Challenging yourself with several um, hold fix. Lovely, Jan's got hers. So once we have everything in place, we've got our two fabrics laid up. They're caught between the embroidery hoops. We've got our thread and needle already. There's a knot at one end of our thread so that when we start our first stitch, it's not gonna go all the way through. So we're going to start stitching um, over our uh, kind of shape that we've got. So you can see here, I started stitching before I actually would meet my hole. And that's to secure the fabric round your hole that you've made. So you're going to do more stitches kind of over all around the area. And it's a running stitch. So a running stitch is a really simple stitch of just going in and out of your fabric. So you want to make your stitches about the size of a grain of rice. And then a little way after you've gone in, you're coming out. Going back in and out. Trying to create those stitches about the size of a grain of rice, as I said not too big. You can do smaller as well. But we're just going in and out. And this is where it gets into the more meditative, very relaxing, because you're just doing that process of going in and out. Once you've done your first line, then you're just going to go back on yourself reasonably close to your first line and do the same stitches. It'd be good if you can match them up. So you're going in and out in the same place that you went in your previous line, but it doesn't matter too much. The wonderful thing about this mending method is it is slightly imperfect. It's, it's really showing the um, damage to your garment if you, make, if you were fixing something in this method. It's kind of really embracing um, the history of the fabric and really celebrating all the marks and tears it has in it. So now we are kind of all getting the hang of it. It'd be really nice just hear how people are finding this. Are you getting a sense of that just 
really relaxing going in and out fixing our clothing by supporting it Memonati, how's yours going um so i'm actually somebody who is very impatient um <laughs> and so i don't really enjoy slow processes um but it's definitely very therapeutic um so i'm enjoying it so far uh, let's hope i don't make any mistakes because then i'm going to get frustrated <laughs> <laughs> there are no mistakes though <laughs> let's see yours how's it going lovely I also don't actually have a hoop because I forgot to keep a pack for myself when we were handing these out <laughs> um, <laughs> um but I mean it's going good so far I think I, mean, I do think sometimes an embroidery hoop can be limiting. It might not be how you enjoy to stitch. I did this one without using an embroidery hoop because I kind of like going where I want, whereas an embroidery hoop keeps you to a certain area. So um, it might not be for everyone, the embroidery hoop, but it does help keep the fabric together and create that tension. I've um, placed some pins in the fabric to keep mine together. Very but... nice. It's nice everyone else has a hoop. <laughs> <laughs> How's it, how's it going uh, with you, Annie? Annie and Mary, how's it going? Holding my piece of green fabric. <laughs> so I've got my heart on the top of it and I'm refusing to do anything else with it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I like the idea of making a hole in my piece of fabric. I've cut my heart out and it's white, it's on top. I'm thinking, how can I just tack it on because I'm not making a hole in so I'm not damaging something else. <laughs> I'm not going to do anything. So I'm working out that I put another piece on top. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Or can I just show what you've got? Hold it or can, can I just tack all the way around this as darning on to neaten? Yeah, you can um, tack it round as well, and then go in with your stitches. Yeah, because um. So that. I love how big your heart is. Heart is darling. That is. But I've got a um, sofa that's the dog's chewed bits on the patchwork, so I can happily, where I've got holes, with abandon, push things on and tack. But I don't like making holes in things unnecessarily. There you go. Taking the principled stance. <laughs> <laughs> but that's good. <laughs> but a good excuse for not following instruction. <laughs> well, I, ha I have followed instructions, but I'm, yeah. And I, and I think it will be useful because I've got lots of jumpers with holes in already, pre-prepared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you. there are so many different ways to darn uh, fabrics and there are some that are more invisible, um, but I really love the idea of making all these marks really obvious and really enjoying all the years of wear and where you fixed it in places. Okay. And I'm sure the red wine will help. <laughs> Can I, um, to a certain extent. Can I check? You put um, You put your repair fabric underneath it, and a backing fabric to that, and tack through the three of them. Because you're having that, that sandwich again, aren't you? Yeah, you can do multiple layers. Um, say with a uh, uh, cantar, which is um, a method of um, like. Uh, Bangladesh and India of um, layering up these fabrics and you'll find that they'll use loads and loads of layers and it's kind of almost a quilted texture you achieve um, if you layer up loads of different fabrics and do that running stitch in and out. Okay. What about uh, Kaz, how's it going? Hi there, yeah good. Actually, I was uh, feeling slightly mesmerised then. I feel <laughs> like I'm going, my, my body is going slower. My breathing's getting slower, which is really nice. Um, it is. I haven't done anything like this for decades, so it's been, yeah, really lovely. Yeah, I could never Calming. get into yoga, but I think this is a similar thing of slowing your breathing and kind of getting mesmerised by it. Yeah, I like that. So I can, yes, I can recommend this as well then. And uh, Kova, how's it going for you? Very relaxing. This is how it's going. 
Oh, beautiful. I chose the yellow one. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Thank you. Really nice. <laughs> She's already done four rows. I know. I feel like my one is getting extremely messy because I'm trying to focus on two things. <laughs> That's the beauty of it, isn't it? I mean. Exactly. Perfectness. Exactly. And what about Nelly? How's it going for you? It just took my hoop off to move it over a bit. Oh, so if you finished your first I, hole? I did one. Beautiful, perfect. Yeah. Very neat. So I'm just going to move the hoop a little bit because I had, I obviously cut my shape too big. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fine. You find that you need to move on to the next section. You've cut yourself three holes to fix. Yeah. Polka dots. We had something from Maria. In my country, people do lots of layer sewing. It'd be lovely to hear more from you, Maria. You can unmute or tell us more. Yeah, in my country, I normally from Bangladesh. So normally rural people normally do this sewing. They make noxicata. Do you know noxicata? I don't know that one, no. It's like a um, long material and they shoot like three or four more than the people normally shoot together and they make a big kata. It's like, um, how can oh, I yeah. explain? Yeah, it's like, it's a long and they normally shoot different type of design they make. Beautiful. It's, it's a really lovely, um, that particular practice, very community centered. And it's a shame we're all having to do this by ourselves <laughs> on our little sample. Yeah. Um, it'd be lovely to have that ability to do um, kind of the community version of this. Where we can all work on the same thing. You know, I just wanted to learn how to do, but you are just showing the same. I want to really want to know. Because in my country, I haven't got a chance to how to do it. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a very similar thing of these sort of small stitches. Yeah. I've got some... What about Tati? How's it going? Well, I am. I, I don't know if you can see because I chose a very similar color. It's nice. Very, yeah, it's very relaxing. So it's I'm enjoying a lot. Great. Beautiful. I, I was just going to show these um, photos. It's really hard to see, but um, this is uh, Kanto. And it's just really beautiful. It creates a sort of quilted texture when you layer up all these um, fabrics and sew through them. It's like waves almost. <laughs> it kind of looks like alligator skin too. Or like snake skin. <laughs> very specific mess. <laughs> the texture sorry have we heard from nancy yet how's your one going yeah all good very very relaxing <laughs> Nice to hear everybody's stories. Well, it'd be really lovely while we're doing this to kind of um, talk about this um, theme that we've been exploring in Darning Noam of how women um, contribute to the borough or our communities. And you do find that um, sewing and mending is, is one kind of more traditional side of things. Um, I can imagine like with my family, it was like my grandmother and mother who taught me how to sew. And it's kind of that passing on of knowledge, um, which is something we kind of talked about uh, in the last workshop yesterday. So it'd be lovely to hear from people about um, how they feel women contribute to the borough or um, their communities. If there was an inspirational woman in their life that they feel like they learned skills from or or they feel like made a really big impact on them personally or 
those around them. Memonar too, can you start us off? Um, so I think actually that we all kind of contribute to our communities, even when it's not so intentional or I don't know, within a formal structure. Like we started off looking at factories, um, which is kind of a really good example of kind of organized way in which people contribute to the society. But I think um, for me, like someone who I really look up to or someone that's really contributed so much to me, uh, that is a woman. The first person I think of is my mom. Uh, she's a housewife. Um, she raised us. That's kind of where she focused her energies. Um, and I feel like in a wider community, generally, kind of that role is really looked down upon or it's not really valued as much as it should be. But I think even the impacts that one person like your mom or someone's mom can make on them and just the kind of character they instill in that person is like a really important contribution to the community because if you were able to influence someone I don't know to just be a decent human being they're then going to go into the community and uh you know be kind to people and I don't know just be a supportive member of any community so I think uh for me it's my mom um but I think in general I think there's lots of value in women or people that contribute outside of kind of this structured labor um mm. or like job roles yeah beyond just like making money <laughs> yeah you I know, don't just money should equals value necessarily when it comes to uh, people's contribution I totally agree about the child raising I mean really if you look at it we're raising the next generation of our society so shouldn't that be the most important goal because our entire world will be shaped by these children when they grow up. So I don't think we put nearly enough emphasis or value on that. And just showing care and affection. And it's just such a powerful way to change someone's life. And uh, those sort of small actions make such a difference. Thank you for sharing, Bonnie. Uh, anyone else? Any opinions? I was um, going to say, like Memonatu, um, I think my mum was, well, she still is an inspiration, but when I was two, um, my parents bought a shop. So I, I grew up in a shop, very, very kind of apt for the theme of shop <laughs> yes. factories. Um, it wasn't in Newham, it was in Walthamstow. But my kind of early years, my mum didn't want to, me to go to nursery. So I was, you know, shopkeeper with my mum. It was me and my mum running the shop. And she was such a kind of, um, you know, a person in the community and people would come in and chat. And she always had time for people, um, even if. She had other customers. She would always, always say to someone, well, do you want to wait? And she'd have a little chair in the shop and people would, um, you know, they, they kind of really valued her opinion and her um, advice. And, and as a little girl, I kind of grew up with that until I went to, so I had to go to school, unfortunately, at five <laughs> and, and leave that little world that we had. But um, yeah, she, she's my inspiration today. That, was that so is lovely. lovely. Thank you for sharing, Jan. You're welcome. What type of shop was it, Jan? Oh, it was it was called the Handy Stores. So um, there were a lot of sweets, big jars of sweets. So kind of you know like a general shop that you bought um, lots of different things in. But um, yeah, a lot of sweets. <laughs> jars. Well, maybe that's the thing that you remember the most because you were little. <laughs> Well, funny enough, I don't actually like sweets that much. I think because I was surrounded by them and I probably scoffed a lot when I was little. And um, yeah. <laughs> Too much of a good thing kind of ruins it. Too yeah. much of a good thing, yeah. My mum worked in a shop when she was young and she said she had the free run of all the sweets. <laughs> the grocers. In an, in, she lived on the Isle of Wight and it was a little shop. 
And yeah, he, 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 the owner didn't tell her off because he knew that she would eat as many sweets as she wanted in the first week. And then the, she said the novelty completely wore off because she got sick and then she never wanted to eat them. So yeah, same principle. I think that's so true. You just have a glut of them and you're like, no, I've had enough. I've had enough <laughs> strawberry bonbons to last me a lifetime. <laughs> yeah, I had the same thing when I worked in a fudge shop. They just they let you have as Ooh. many samples as you like, but you quickly learn that you don't want any more. <laughs> Definitely my mum too, like others have said. I like the idea that my mum has uh, and my auntie have both got very good sewing skills they've got more patience than me though and um just the idea that they taught me that that's a, a good pastime and it's worthy of your time is a nice thing to have I think definitely our relationship to sewing has changed quite a lot and they probably wouldn't um I don't know it depends but sometimes you want this kind of darning to be completely invisible so that you don't show that it needed fixing um, but it's quite nice to also show uh, your your enjoyment of something and um, make that mending really obvious it's become a quite a trendy thing hasn't it the hashtag visible mending which makes me chuckle because it's kind of come full circle hasn't it it has totally <laughs> I'm sure, yeah, like our grandparents would be like, oh, you can't show <laughs> that you had to fix something. It's funny, so terrible. My, my mum tried to teach me how to sew when I was a teenager and I just never, like, I just wasn't really interested and I didn't do it. And now here I am, she's not around anymore. So <laughs> would be, I'm sure she'd be very pleased. <laughs> I'm sure she'd be very proud that you got the uh, sewing done eventually. Yeah. I think if it's in you, it's in you. Can't get rid of it. It's like an itch. You have to scratch, <laughs> my opinion. <laughs> Sewing your own clothes has become so expensive. It's um, almost a luxury thing. Like I know when my grandmother would talk about how they would make their own clothes and she'd sew clothes for the kids because they were poor. Um, but nowadays, I mean, to sew your own clothes, the cost to fabric and stuff if you go at least I don't know if it's the same in the UK but here in Canada fabric is really expensive to buy fabric so we have a I think we're quite lucky in the UK now that we have um there's quite a lot of wholesalers that are still around so if you go to certain parts of London um Labrick Grove and around there there's a huge amount of wholesale shops that you can meet they do retail as well so I think in, a, in an urban area, maybe, but I'm not sure what it's like in, in rural parts of the UK, but in, a, in urban areas, it is relatively easy to go and buy cheap fabrics. I think we're quite lucky. Green Street uh, market is actually a really good place. You can get like meters of fabric for like one pound. It's like, obviously, if you want to get a better quality fabric, you'd spend a little more. Um, but I think there's lots of access to kind of cheaper mm. fabric. No, when I was going to buy just ordinary 100% cotton fabric to make masks, um, close to $20 a meter. Yes, no, it wouldn't be like that here. Yeah. So, yeah, if you wanted to make a dress or something and you needed four or five meters, I mean, you spent $100 just on the fabric before you've put any time into it or bought any of the notions or accessories. And You have department stores there. Yes. Do they not sell it cheaper in department stores? Uh, no, they don't sell fabric. Uh, Even our craft store, Michael's, it doesn't sell um, fabric, really. There's a few little packages of pre-cut things, but that's it. Like, you can't buy fabric on, the, on a bolt gosh. or by the meter or anything. We're very fortunate. Yeah. Yeah, I do find that if um, if you go into central London, then the fabrics are really expensive. But if you like go to East Ham, High Street or Green Street, they have plenty of fabric shops that aren't super expensive because new residents don't want to spend like the <laughs> excessive prices that they charge now. A lot of Please feel free people. to email us all those shop locations. Yes, <laughs> Green Street is like, a, I don't know. You like can walk down it. 
for fabrics. Um, other places in London, Hackney. Hackney is really good for fabric. Um, and then for Bonnie, um, I'm not sure about, obviously, what's available in Canada, but Amazon also does fabrics. Um, obviously, you can't trust the quality of all of those because you can't uh, test the fabrics before buying. Uh, well, that's the thing. I mean, I try not to support Amazon too much to shop local when I can. But also just the buying something like fabric online. I mean, you can't tell the texture or the weight of it or the quality. So I find it really difficult. I'm a tactile person. I have to go in and <laughs> be able to touch yeah, things. You need to fill um, that fabric. And um, I like what, I think it's Anna Info at Research Arts <laughs> said about recycling fabrics. Um, and that is so true with things like this as well, where you might only need a patch. Um, you can reuse loads of, you'll find that there are fabrics all over your house, Annie. <laughs> um, yep. And you find in charity shops, they, they sell like old bed sheets and things like that. They sell clothes that you could pull apart and make into new things. When I was at um, university, and I think uh, Mamma Nautus found the same thing, is that you don't have a lot of money to spend and you get really creative. <laughs> and so you just end up recycling all sorts and, and finding bits of fabric in places you wouldn't think to. <laughs> Another yeah. thing you could look into is actually producing your own fabrics, like uh, with Conchado, for example. You could create your own textile design and then send it off to get printed. And they also do a thing where they send you lots of scrap fabrics uh, that you can then put together to make something new. It's worth looking on eBay if you if you if you look at it twenty dollars a meter for just for ordinary cotton, because although the internet's not great for fabric in some ways, um, if just ordinary ordinary plain cotton's twenty dollars a meter, then I think you'll do a lot better on eBay than that. What was the name of the place you said printed fabric? Contrado. I'll, I'll write it in the group, in the chat, just for anyone else interested. I actually think now as well, with um, about 20 minutes to go, it'd be nice to just explore um, a few other stitches and really have a feel of what you've created so far. This um, layering up of running stitches, it makes it such a fun <laughs> textile. Um, and it feels very comforting to me, um, I find, um, where you've done your running stitches over and over the spot. You can see that it's now kind of supported. It's a much thicker piece of fabric now, uh, which works well, especially if you're trying to fix something that is in an area that wears out quite a lot, um, like elbows and things like that. It's now like a kind of padded bit of fabric. Um, and when we're thinking about also how to develop this sample into um, something that might represent the idea of our opinions on how women um, contribute um, to our communities or to our lives. Um, I was thinking that we could use um, basic backstitch, which starts out very similar to a running stitch, where you do your grain of rice length you're going out as if you were going to do a running stitch, but you're just going back on yourself to meet where you came into your fabric. And that just a straight line. I feel like it's um, four, can you see? Um, and so with this kind of stitch where it creates a solid line, you can write words with it. Um, the sample I did earlier, I just wrote mend. <laughs> but if there are certain words that come to mind when you're thinking about this idea of women contributing to Newham um, or someone in your life, maybe that you kind of really want to think about how they have affected your life or made a contribution or taught you something maybe it was who um as we were saying before like um our, our mums who taught us maybe to sew or wanted us to learn how to sew 
Um, so with this kind of basic line, you can write words, you can draw an image you think of that you think might represent. Katie? Yeah? Can I ask um, a little bit more about the the banner and maybe you could let people know how we're going to collect the pieces um, and the kind of, yeah, how that's going to move forward? Yeah, so some of you might have done a sample um, yesterday where we did our fabric crayon um, and we were thinking about that same idea of how women contribute to our lives um, and we just created it with fabric crayon. But you could also stitch into this using that running stitch or back stitch, um, whatever you want to do with it. But what we would really like is to be able to kind of create a banner where all of these are sewn together. And we're going to have a drop off point at Stratford Library um, next weekend. But also you can post it um, to us and we can also arrange to uh, pay for the postage if you like. Um, we'll send out information to your emails um, that you signed up with um, to do that. But it'd be really lovely to have lots of your work, lots of your kind of squares that we can put all together to show what these workshops have done, this kind of nice um, exploration of how women contribute um, in our various ways that we represent that. Thank you, Katie. Has anyone got any questions about the um, pieces or does anyone want to yeah. add anything to, to that? What's the time frame? I didn't understand the time frame that you want them back by. So we have the drop off point next weekend uh, for those who are local and can get Stratford Library um, on Saturday. Um, but you can also post them. But have the full week don't feel in a rush um to finish these this weekend or um just a, a week give yourself a week to work on them as much as you like don't feel that you have to make a masterpiece we would love to see whatever you create and katie will you be at the library or will the library staff collect the pieces um we're not quite sure about how we can facilitate that yet. We'd quite like to um, maybe be, be there for a, a few hours, but hopefully have a box so that that allows for more time for you to drop it off. Right. So um, we can email you confirming that. Mm -hmm. What is the stitch that you did at the bottom of your other one? It almost looks like a gold rope there. Ah, this chain stitch. Yeah. So. Um, I'll show you how to do that. So this was just the back stitch where you're starting off as if you're doing the running stitch and then you're going back on yourself to create a straight line. And chain stitch um, seems a bit more complicated, but once you get into the rhythm of it, it is very relaxing. Um, so you're coming out of your fabric and you've got your thread and you're thinking about it going round in a loop. It helps when you're first starting out to just kind of lay it out um, so you know it's going round and you're going to go back into your fabric very near where you came out and you're then going to come out again about uh, a rice length uh, distance and what it's doing is creating a loop and then you're catching the loop so if you pull your thread it's creating a loop and then you're catching it. And then you just continue that process. So you're thinking about creating a loop. You're going back into your fabric and out again to create a loop and then catch it. So this one is a bit fiddly, but once you get it, it is, um, very easy to create kind of more textured line. Uh, it creates a, a connected line. So you could also draw or write with that using that stitch. And it's very satisfying when you get the hang of it. 
the one you did on the other piece, is that using the same thickness of thread or is that a thicker thread? It yep, looks so thicker from here, thickness. but it just, okay, that's just the way the stitch goes. Yeah. Cool. Thank so you. that's the chain stitch. So that's all the stitches I used in this sample of that running stitch creates that lovely kind of quilted texture. The um, mend using the back stitch and just these kind of loops with the chain stitch. Does anyone want me to show chain stitch again? How are you finding it? I'd like to hear anyway how you're finding it, what you're sort of working on now. Who haven't we spoken to? Um, Janet, maybe? What I was thinking about, do you mean we just continue on this piece in different colours with different stitches going over and over? Or do you mean doing separate pieces or...? Well, I'm thinking of just working on top of one piece because it's quite interesting when you just kind of layer up these and um, you're kind of darning a uh, decorative mending sample might be quite small. So you might want to work into that space. It's your piece to compose as you like. Oh, right. So just decorate it with the different colours and stitches and... Um, yeah, and, and just have fun with it. <laughs> or something if you want to yeah yeah and if you want to kind of connect it to um a certain thing you're thinking about about that idea of how women contribute to them or a certain woman you're thinking about um you could write a name you could write um something that relates to it or it could just be lots of nice stitches and just be kind of more abstract <laughs> I wasn't sure if we had to design something, you know, more elaborate or something. So it's really quite simple technique, isn't it? Yeah, we're going for simple stitches that you can use to make into whatever you want. Doesn't need to be complicated. It's meant to be relaxing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Well, I'm relieved. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's it's definitely relaxing. I mean, I'm looking at my piece and it's not, you know, it's kind of a bit all over the place, but I'm just really enjoying that repetitive um, process of my thread going in and out. It's, yeah, it is quite meditative. meditative. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't need to be about the final product. It can just be about that experience of um, kind of taking some time to slow down, do something with your hands, I know with, uh, for myself, doing everything on Zoom, I mean, I know we're doing this on Zoom, but it's quite nice to just do something with your hands, do something practical. How's yours going, Maminati? Um, I can show you how it's going. The needles come out, so I need to thread that again, but uh, <laughs> this Beautiful. is what it looks like, just a running stitch. The running stitch is so lovely in itself, though. Yeah, it is. What about uh, Lauren? How's it going? So, um, yeah, I'm still working on mine, but yeah, um, I'm just like Beautiful. layering it up with a bunch of colours. Um, probably end up a bit more abstract. I was like, could I do like a bowl of food or something? Um, but. <laughs> Um, I'm just finding and I just quite like the way it turned out. Was the bowl of food relating to that theme of how women contribute or is it just something you're thinking about? <laughs> <laughs> um, well yeah I mean I just when you stood like a simple shape I kind of thought of like okay how about just like a bowl or something because I tried to cut a circle didn't quite work out hence the bowl um, and then like you know you just kind of think of it I don't know I, I, I honestly just thought a lot, a, lot, a lot of the time about like my mother's food and stuff like that um, we kept talking about mums and I was like that was that I don't know it's just something that I, I like thinking about with her um so yeah I'm just like searching that bowl um <laughs> food is definitely something about how you you get shown affection through food and 
it's a lovely thing to share food very much so uh what about Kirsty? i don't think we spoke to you Kirsty, did we Maybe Kirsty doesn't want to speak to me. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe there's something with the audio. Uh, what about Yasmin? Jasmine? Hi. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> what was the question? <laughs> How's it going? Oh, yeah. No, it's going good. I don't... Uh, one second. I can... I've just oh, done beautiful. the same running stitch, but I've now just started with a new different colour so I'm gonna try and do something with that <laughs> but it's great usually I um, crochet and knit and I find that kind of repetitive process really calming so this is very similar but just different medium so it's it's nice I'm excited to see like what I can make using this. I love seeing it with the uh, the light coming through you can really see each stitch you've done it's beautiful. <laughs> What about Maggie? How's your one going? Oh, we can't hear you, but I can see it. Um, it's not terribly neat, but I'm enjoying it. Ooh, yeah, I like it. Yeah. I like the yeah. fact that it's not super neat. Yeah, they don't need to be neat. <laughs> yeah. It's expressive. And it's still doing the job. It's still fixing the hole. I'm sorry. What about Jennifer Awkward? How's your one going? Uh, okay, I think I've used different colors. Oh, beautiful. Just doing. Um, a, a proverb, a stitch in time, because my mum was always uh, quoting things like. I'm sure we all remember a particular saying that was said to us a thousand times by our family. Ooh. Can never get out of your head. <laughs> I think Jennifer's muted herself. <laughs> I see her mouth moving, but I don't hear any Sorry, words. yeah. No, I just said that some of my mother's sayings were unrepeatable, <laughs> but, um, <laughs> you know, she had a, a saying for most situations in daily life events, um, and that she would have used this as well. And I'm dying to hear the saying yeah. now. <laughs> I think the funny thing about um, your mother's sayings or your parents' sayings is that as a child, you would kind of roll your eyes. And then as you grow up, I, I find myself saying the same thing to my daughter. And I'm like, I can't believe I've just said that. <laughs> yeah. I'm just looking at the time, everyone, and we do have to finish up at 3.30 as there's another um, Newham Heritage event on this Zoom account. Um, so it's, I make it 23 past. Um, so yeah, those last lovely stitches going in. Before we end, was anyone else wanting to talk about um what they're thinking about as they're creating this piece or how it's going. If you wanted any more advice. <laughs> how are you, if you, when you're changing the color of the thread, how are you finishing it at the back? Are you just knotting it or? Yeah, I'll uh, show you that now. Um, Let me just start my stitch. So if I do my stitch and I've run out, oh, let me just do it one more. Um, I find it uh, best to kind of 
look at the back and you've got a previous loop to go through that. And then once you've made that loop to go through it, so you're kind of knotting it, but attaching it to one of your previous stitches, it just kind of helps keep that knot together. <laughs> cool. Does that help? How's your one going? Um, it's going all right. Oh, beautiful. Really beautiful. They're very ordered stitches. <laughs> I can't quite believe it, but yeah, because I'm quite clumsy usually, so. <laughs> Maybe this is your medium. Yeah, I'm the girl before. I'm a crocheter as well, and I also do sewing on the machines, but it's quite nice to actually hand sew, so, yeah. It would be lovely before we um, end up to see everyone's. Maybe, um, Katie, if you stopped sharing soon we could have a a kind of gallery view of everyone's what do you think yeah shall we do that now we've only got five minutes to go so um it'd be lovely if you could all hold up your pieces um and we'll record that but if you don't want to show your face then just put it up in front of your face i'm going to show my other one because i <laughs> didn't do very well on the other one try to stop and start oh these are beautiful Really, really beautiful. Fabulous. Wow. All of them are so funky and different. 